asked for them for her many virgins to sons. She was no nonsense, and she did not believe in making small talk or in entering on the floor with other women. Then this stroke struck in 2003 while she was in London. Shocked by the news, me and my friends prayed for the need for recovery, and thank God the next day she made a miraculous recovery. I flew over to visit her in the East London Hospital. She had regained consciousness, and the doctor was asking her a standard set of questions to assess her cognitive function. Questions such as, is it day or night? Do you know who I am? Do you know who you are? What's your name? She was answering until he got to the question, do you know who is the Prime Minister? Then I got cross and said, of course I know who the Prime Minister is. And after that, she refused to answer any more questions because she felt the doctor was talking to her like she was stupid. That was when I knew she was back to normal. Many more things changed at Oxy Road. Now my grandfather had to peel his own food, peel her food for her, pack his own suitcase and make his own mile. For the first time in a while, he had to handle money so he could pay the maids. My granny locked the money in one place and she kept the keys to lock in another totally unrelated place. My granddad complained, dear, we need to have the system. And she retorted, this is the system. This is my system. And that was that. So for the first time in my life, my granny was helpless because she experienced a physical handicap. And it did definitely give her frustration. But I knew that she was also secretly happy to be taken care of. And she acquired the glow of a girl who knew that she was adored. I always felt sad that her aging body did not allow her to do the things that her soul wanted to do such as to roam the streets window shopping, eat more desserts, or move around freely. And the most terrible thing was when she got locked in syndrome, and she could no longer move nor communicate. It came to me, imagining how agonizing it would be to be in her position, just lying there for months, while others ate, drank, moved around, and talked. But, ever the survivor, Manek overcame multiple infections in her locked-in state, and those were infections that people thought would kill her. A big thank you must go to her wonderful security officers who and her nursing staff who facilitated her life with a lot of love. The post-stroke Nene was a person who was full of life. If I could spend more years with her and if she was able-bodied, there would still be so many things to see, to do, and to talk about, and to taste. And I miss